Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Ray Tracing On versus Ray Tracing Off in Battlefield 5 updated for 2020. These tests were done two days apart on exactly the same computer, on exactly the same settings, and on exactly the same map to make it as fair as possible. Now we are playing 64 player conquest mode here and while my personal play ability is not that great, at least I do run around the map and try to make them as even as possible. Given that this is live gameplay on live servers against real people, they're never going to match 100%. But if I just load up a single player level and just walk forward for one minute, then I don't think that actually tells you very much versus a 20 minute battle. Now I'm not gonna show you all 20 minutes today because frankly, I think the point will be made in the first five, but the benchmark results at the end are for the entire battle play, not just for the five minutes I'm showing you. So keep in mind that there's more footage than what you're actually going to see here. Although frankly, after a couple of minutes, it is pretty stable. Battlefield 5 is mature now. Ray tracing was added near the end of its development as one of the Halo features that NVIDIA offered when they announced the RTX series actually more than a year ago now and of course Battlefield 5 itself is not brand new there are other titles which use ray tracing differently so do not take this as a judgment of ray tracing universally or going forward or in every game this is just in Battlefield 5 I was testing this for the $2,000 comparison and I tested it both ways and I thought that would make an interesting video and so here we are i7 9700KF, 5 gigahertz fixed, RTX 2070 Super, 1440p high detail. As you can see on the top of the screen, RTX off is on the left hand side of the screen and RTX on is on the right hand side of the screen. Now before we even get to a benchmark chart, the performance should be pretty apparent that there's a difference right now. What is interesting is that while there is a fairly decent performance hit for having ray tracing on, and I would question whether or not ray tracing makes a lick of difference in this sort of combat mode, I would like to point out that at 1440p high detail RTX on, it's still very playable and very smooth. Now, how fast you want your performance to be and what the refresh rate of your monitor is is obviously going to determine whether or not it makes a difference to you. If you have a 1440p 60 hertz monitor, then both of these are gonna be exactly the same. If you have a 1440p 144 hertz monitor, then ray tracing, especially in PVP and Conquest and whatnot, is definitely not worth it. You're not getting enough to make it make any sense. I do think it's worth pointing out that an RTX 2070 Super doesn't hit 144 frames per second at 1440p high detail either. And frankly, if you want that level of performance, you have to buy all the computer, RTX 2080 Ti, if you want 144 frames. 1440p 144 is very hard to do in these sorts of games. And Battlefield is honestly pretty well optimized. It's pretty smooth. You can see here the performance is pretty good overall. The 1% lows are gonna be down because of the deaths and respawns. The 1% low is more reflective of the actual combat bottom. Every time you die and then it switches to somewhere else, it introduces a hitch. And that's kind of where that one, the 0.1% the low drops off. So don't, I include it just because it's there, but don't worry about that too much more. Pay attention to the average and the 1% low to give you a boundary box of typical performance and worst case scenario, because the 1% low represents what you're gonna get 99% of the time. And as you can see from the real time performance number, while there's a fairly large hit, it's still very nice. My personal opinion is that ray tracing, at least for the foreseeable future, is really only important in single player offline modes. If you're playing the campaign of this, if you're playing some other games that include ray tracing, and you're playing a campaign where 60 frames per second is really all that you need because you're playing against the computer, then by all means, turn on that ray tracing, take your time. You can stop and admire the scenery and the reflections in the windows and the, the way the light reflects off of the a glass when there's a fire and the pretty explosions and the other beautiful ray tracing effects. But when you're playing against real people on an online server, who has time to look at any of that? So turn RTX on for single player campaign stories, turn RTX off for online multiplayer game, 
And I suspect that it's going to be that way for the next three years or so. There will come a time where having ray tracing on will just become normal. There will become a time when ray tracing is so good and performs so well on even entry-level cards for $150 or $200 that you just turn it on and you get 100 plus frames per second and no one cares. But that day is not today. And frankly, I don't think it's going to be here with the 30 series launching later in 2020 either. I think maybe we'll start to see it with the 40 series a year and a half, maybe two years from now. Somewhere in the two to three year uh, from now range from 2020, maybe 2022, 2023 is where we're going to see ray tracing sort of become just, it's just on by default. And of course, by that point, AMD will have ray tracing hardware in their cards. Intel is going to be supporting ray tracing and updating uh, updated uh, both cards, both on their integrated graphics as well as their dedicated cards. This is just going to become a normal feature. But I thought this would be an interesting little side note for you, for those of you curious, where does RTX stand in 2020 with freshly updated drivers and freshly updated games with all the latest patches? There's tons of these launch videos where when Battlefield 5 first came out and it first had ray tracing in these cards and, a, and an RTX 2070 first came out, you can watch those from, from a year ago. But what has happened with a year of Windows updates, a year of NVIDIA driver improvements, and a year of game optimization updates in one of the original launch titles? Well, here you go. 124 frames per second average with RTX off versus 84 frames per second with RTX on. The 1% low is very similar, 92 and 64 in terms of percentage difference. Ignore the 0.1% low, that's deaths and respawns. You can look at this two ways. Number one, holy smokes, ray tracing just destroys performance. Look at that. We lose a third of our performance dropping down to 84 from 124. That's terrible, man. Ray tracing sucks. Or you could say, wow, 84 frames per second average at 1440p high detail on a mid-level $500 card, that's not bad. The 1% low was over 60. If you have a 1440p 60 hertz monitor, set V-Sync on, or G-Sync if you have a G-Sync monitor, turn RTX on and you will get 60 smooth frames per second. 99 plus percent of the time and you just don't have to care. So whether or not you think this result is good or bad depends very much upon your point of view as to whether or not you desperately want the 124 frames per second or whether 84 sounds awfully good. I look forward to hearing what you guys all have to say about this video. Thoughts, feedback, suggestions, that's what the comment section is down there for below. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon for future updates. I will have links in the video description to the system build of this and the playlist on the i7-9700KF for those of you interested, although I suspect most people coming to this video don't really care because that's a separate thing, but it's the machine I used. If you want to see the build and parts guide overview, it'll be linked down below. Thank you all so much for being here. I'll see all of you next time.